What's up, everybody? Welcome back. This is I'm Brandon, and this is the Glassworks YouTube channel. Uh, today we're going to be working on the expedition. If you saw my community page, I had a little quick post up where I showed we got new wheel hubs and new brake pads. Well, I started on the other side and come to find out it doesn't look like I actually need the hubs. It looks like I need to go ahead and replace my rack and pinion. It's got a little slack in it. So what we're going to do today, I can't mess with the other side anymore. I've got a bad caliper bracket. Got to get a new one in. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to show you how to do the brakes on this thing real quick. And we're going to do the driver's side since it is still needing to be done. Um, first off, what you want to do, of course, set your parking brake. Make sure on good level ground where you can work. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the lug nuts off. I'm going to jack it up, get the lug nuts off. And then uh, I'll show you everything you need to do to get the brakes off. So let me get you set up. I'm going to get the jack over here. I'm going to get it all jacked up. I'll get the wheel off. And then I'll show you everything that we have to do to get your brake calipers off. Be kind of a pain in the butt if you don't have the right si uh, right tools. And I'll tell you right now, it's a nine millimeter um, Allen head socket, hex head socket. So take them off, and then of course you know want to have you some C clamps or a good bar, you know, to compress the uh, pistons on your uh, caliper. It's a dual piston caliper on these, so. Um, like I said, let me get it set up and I'll show you step by step what we got to get do. So, give me just one minute and I'll be right back. All right, now that you got your wheel off, you've got it jacked up, you got it secured, you're going to get your 19 millimeter hex head. And right here is a plastic cap, and down here on the bottom is a plastic cap. You'll pop them caps off. You get your 19, put it on the brake bar, and you go ahead and break that loose. And then you can hit with a ratchet. That side right there, that one right there was already kind of loose. That one right here feels kind of loose too. All right, there we go. Didn't take much to break it loose. And then just use your ratchet, your impact if you want. Screw it out. I'll get this one out and I'll show you what it looks like. You want to make sure when you're using them, if you have to use a breaker bar, you be careful because you have the bleeder screws for your brakes right there, and you don't want to break that fitting off, or you have more headaches to deal with. And my caliper bracket, this piece right here on the other side, messed up. Holes are stripped out, and the uh, caliper bolts don't want to. Uh, Tighten back down in there. And that's what it looks like right there. That's all it is. And then it's got that Allen head in the top. It's a 9mm. Now they said for the rear brakes, it's a 7mm. I'm not going to worry about the rear right now. Back off. I don't have any slack on this side. It's slack in my tire steering rack on the passenger side. It's giving me the wobbling. 
Uh, that's something I'm gonna have to fix. bottom bolt look exactly the same and then of course after you get that right in here you'll want to put a pry bar and push those calipers back or you can use your c-clamp but you'll want to use two c-clamps because that is a dual caliper or a dual piston caliper <coughs> so if you push the top one in the bottom one will poke out so you got to tighten them together same time so let me uh get this last bolt out and i'll get you closer down to it and uh give you a better look all right now like i said you can get right in here and you can get you've got a small enough pry bar mine's a little too big actually no it's not it works just fine you pry against that caliper compress those pistons you'll pull both of them pins out and then right here on the front there's a retainer clip just kind of pop it off the top here pop it off the bottom down there then you can pop it out right there and you can pull your caliper out the way Mine's kind of stuck. Sometimes I can be a little pain in the butt. But uh, let me get you out of my way here and I'll get this off and I'll be right back. I don't know how well you can see this. The damn light out here ain't worth a two. But you can see the thickness between the old one and the new one. Now, I'll get back around here and I'll show you how to put the new ones on. Let me just a second. All right, I've got the uh, pistons here compressed. So when you go to put the back pad on, it's got these little tabs that look just like this that will actually lock inside of the pad. Let me find my rear pad. Now these might be kind of stiff to get in. You might have to squeeze them down a little bit to get them in because well, they're new and of course they gotta be a pain in the rear sometime. Of course when they get in they'll snap in place. Now you may have to bend these tabs back right here just a little bit top and bottom on both sides and the back caliper i mean on the back pad and the front pad the front pad has these notches right here I don't know how well you can see. Right there is where these pads will sit. Just like this. So you'll want to get these tabs back to where that pad can sit flush against the rotor there. Bring it back a little bit more on top. And a little bit more back on the bottom. There you go. And then, of course, you don't ever want to let your rotor hang, or your caliper hang. I'll do the top and the bottom. And then you just stick your pins back in on top. Get everything lined back up. Then you get your bottom pin back in. 
and then we will set the uh, front plant back home. That's all there is to it, to doing a brake job on these things. And of course, you'll make sure after you tighten them up, you'll go back and torque them down. Put your uh, breaker bar on, get some tightness on them, whatever you want to do. I don't know what the torque specs are. But it's something that you could easily look up as well. You know, good and tight. You see, that's the slack I was talking about that's in my steering rack. I originally thought that was my uh, hubs. All right. You get all that. And then, let's see here. See what you can see. All right. And then, the last part to do, is you're going to put this on. You have these two tabs right here that'll go in these spots. Top and bottom. You'll have that ear that folds back. And then that ear right there that folds back. can be kind of difficult just kind of tap it in there it goes it just locks everything in together makes everything nice and secure now other than that all you got to do now is uh of course this rotor probably wouldn't hurt to be returned it's got a gouge right there but uh you know you can just clean it up with a uh, brake cleaner and uh put your wheel back on and you're set that's basically it on doing these for a quick brake job it doesn't take long when you have the right tools the hardest part to me is these calipers is compressing them pistons which they make tools specifically for doing that you can use c-clamps um, I mean, there's all kinds of ways you can do it, but that right there takes the longest is compressing that so you can get these new pads in and slid back on. All right, let me get the wheel back on and we'll be back with you. All right, now that's pretty much it when you get your wheel back on. Of course, you want to tighten the lug nuts up and go back and torque them. I'm going to do them in a star pattern. And of course, after about 100 miles, you're going to want to go back and check your lug nuts again, retorque them. Anytime you drive your vehicle, you take a wheel off, you torque the lug nuts down, drive a little bit, 100 miles or so, and then go back and retorque it. So, got everything back together. And of course, you don't want to make you want to make sure you don't forget to put the little plastic dust covers on the uh, hex head bolts. But that's it. You just put it all back together. Of course, like I said, you want to torque it down. You want to check your torque later, about 100 miles. But other than that, that's it. Uh, hopefully, this video helped you out. Uh, any questions, comments, anything like that, feel free to ask. And uh, do me a favor, hit that like button, comment, subscribe. Have a good one.